In this section, we are going to talk about power amplifier. PA or power, power amplifier is a tuned amplifier that uh, amplifies high frequency signals used in radio communication. What is the purpose of amplifier? Why, why we don't? Why we want to amplify our signal? We said that uh, when we send out our signal from our transmitter, the power of signal is absorbed by environment, or uh, in other words, the signal is attenuated. So if we don't have uh, enough power in the beginning, I mean in the transmitter side, when our signal reaches the receiver, it will have very low power, and our receiver may not be able to uh, detect the signal. So we have to uh, we have to send uh, the signal. We have to increase the power of signal in the beginning as much as we can, and uh, this is the job of power amplifier. The frequency at which maximum gain occurs. In uh, an RF amplifier is made variable by changing the inductance or capacitance of the tuned circuit. So the power amplifier is a tuned circuit, which includes uh, transistor, inductance, capacitance, and with tuning this, we can reach a gain we want or power we want in a, a single frequency. Or sometimes we can design uh, the power amplifier to work in a wide range of frequency and we get our desired uh, uh, power in that range. And we have to know that the power gain of RF amplifier is always limited at high radio frequencies, and it's a trade-off. So we, um, if we increase our frequency, our power, the output power will decrease. So we want to know uh, where is the place of uh, our power amplifier. First we have to go to our transmitter because uh, we said that we want to transmit, uh, transmit signal. Uh, this is the, tra the, block of the block diagram of the transmitter and we have lots of blocks like uh, oscillator, mixer, as we talked before, filter. But now we are not going to talk about that. The last block of the transmitter is our power amplifier which is connected to our antenna. So here we have power amplifier and we uh, generally we get a signal here which is not a small signal this signal is also amplified because we have other blocks uh, before PA and they can amplify our signal but the thing imp the important thing here is this signal is not amplified enough so we we need one last stage uh, to amplify the signal and uh, send out uh, to the environment with high power for example here we can have a 1 watt power, let's say, this is an example, and I even it can be more. We say that we, we send our signal with 1 watt power to the environment. And sometimes we have a filter after power amplifier, as you see in this uh, figure. But uh, we can assume that this is the whole amplifier. We don't have to separate them because sometimes a filter is inside our power amplifier. And based on this idea, we can say that yes, uh, our RF power amplifier drives the antenna of the transmitter. So after power amplifier, we have antenna. What are the design goals that we have to be careful about in designing a power amplifier? The first one is gain. We better say a, a power gain. The, the power gain shows the ratio of uh, output power to input power. So this is the signal in the input of power amplifier and it has a power P in. And this is the signal at the output which, which is delivered actually. And this is P out. So we can say that for example our gain is uh, P out to P in over p in. So when we have for example 1 watt, 1 watt uh, at the output and 0 0.1 watt, so our gain is 10 for this amplifier. The other thing is output power is the same as p out and it's important sometimes and actually it depends on our application. Sometimes we need to send out 1 watt, sometimes we need to send less or more than 1 watt. The other thing is bandwidth. We can design two kind of uh, power amplifier. 
The first one is a narrowband uh, power amplifier. This power amplifier only works in one single frequency. So let's say in 2 GHz, we tuned our problem amplifier to work in 2 GHz and we will have m our maximum desired uh, power, I mean delivery power or gain, only in that frequency. But the other kind of design which is challenging is a wide band uh, power amplifier. So we have a wide band and we can get a desired gain in a range of frequency, maybe from 1 GHz to 2 GHz, let's say. One of the most important goals in the design is the power efficiency. Power efficiency is a ratio of delivered power, or let's say output power, to the dissipated power, or the power consumed by power amplifier. So, power efficiency, let's say PE, is equal to P out, or P dissipated. So P out is the power which is delivered to our antenna, or the signal which is the, po the power of the signal which is transmitted. What about p uh, dissipation power? Uh, our power amplifier is like a, is similar to other amplifiers. It has one input, one output, and of course the source, power source, let's say VDD here, and ground. So uh, power dissipation is the power consumed by our amplifier, we know that amp our amplifier gets current from our power source. So we say this is ID for example. We can say yeah, power dissipation is more or less equal to VDD times ID. So actually this is the, this is the power that is uh, you know dissipated inside the power amplifier. So this, our power amplifier consumes this power in order to uh, amplify our signal. What is the goal here? We want to increase our output power and decrease our dissipated power. So we, we will have better PE. So this is very important in po uh, power designing a power amplifier. We always try to increase our power efficiency. We always want to get uh, high gain and high output power with a minimum dissipated power. The other goals are real linearity, which we, uh, we will talk about linearity in upcoming sections. Input and output impedance matching, again it will be discussed. And heat dissipation is also related to dissipated power. If we have a high di power dissipation, we will have a high heat. And uh, you know, high temperature means that uh, we won't have a robust um, design. So we have to be careful about this. Many modern RF amplifiers operate in different mod modes called classes to help achieve different design goals. So we have different types of power amplifiers and we, we can categorize them with classes A, B, like the C, E, F, and uh, it can be D and nowadays like J even is uh, current actually, it's a new amplifier, power amplifier which is designed. Uh, among this class D can work uh, with only low frequency signals, typically used in audio equipment. We can see a, a general, you know, block diagram of the power amplifier. Uh, maybe we can say this uh, power, a class A B power amplifier, or class B power amplifier. We can say here. So as we see here. Uh, we have a, we have transistor in our design. We have output and input matching network that match our you know design to 50 ohm. We will talk about this. Uh, and generally, as we mentioned, we have a, a power source here. We have a voltage source and biasing. And of course, uh, inside this input and output matching, we have uh, we can have uh, passive elements. For example, now we can have um, here uh, an output matching system with passive elements, and also we can ha make a matching system with a microstrip t transmission line. So it depends our, on our application, but generally our power amplifier block diagram is like this. 
uh, is like one transistor biasing uh, voltage source and matching circuits. Thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe. You can learn about this topic and more using our website. The complete course on this topic is provided on our website at www.rasoft.com. Rasoft is providing a complete certificate on radio frequency. The RF basic concepts and fundamentals course is provided free at our website. The courses are complete step-by-step -step approach with quiz and examples and certificate of completion will be provided upon finishing each course. By taking the required courses in RF system and IC design with pass status, RASAF would provide the RASAF radio frequency certificate. The topics are chosen with advice from RF engineers in top industry companies like Apple, Qualcomm, Broadcom and Skyworks who are missing candidates with these skills.